Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things. Today I'm going to be taking you on a little bit of a bookshelf tour. Not of all my bookshelves because that would take me too long and I have too much to say, but just of this shelf behind me, my old and antiquarian bookshelf, where I keep a lot of a lot of classics and a lot of quite physically old classics because a couple of people have been requesting to see all the old books behind me, especially because they always seem to appear in my How to Speak Victorian videos and my Dickens videos and then I don't actually tell you much about them and I thought it would be quite interesting because some of them have cool histories of where I got them from and a lot of them are very old which I approve of so yes let's let's do that let's talk about some very old books So first off, here are my Plays Pleasant and Unpleasant by George Bernard Shaw. I haven't actually read these. I've seen George Bernard Shaw's play Major, Major Barbara, but I haven't actually read many of his plays. I bought an edition on Kindle because I didn't want to ruin these lovely old editions, and then I realised that actually it, what I thought was George Bernard Shaw's completed plays was actually criticism on his completed plays. I bought these very cheaply for about a pound each from a lovely second-hand bookshop in Greenwich, which is a very nice area in London. So they are fairly old, as you can see. They are from I believe 1947 or at least that is the reprint date here and they're quite a nice selection quite a nice book so in the first volume we have Widower's Houses, The Philanderer and Mrs Warren's Profession which is probably George Bernard Shaw's most famous play though I have not yet read it and then in the second volume we have Arms and the Man, Candina, The Man of Destiny and You Never Can Tell and I really like this edition I think it's really nice and I definitely need to read some more George Bernard Shaw at some point soon. Now next along on my shelf we have this which is my copy of Globe Shakespeare as it is called so it's the complete works of Shakespeare and it's rather old. As you can see it has these beautiful end papers. I love like Victorian end papers, they look so cool. And this was at some point sold at a bookseller on New Street, Birmingham, and at some point was owned by the Rowley Green Peace Hall Library. I have no idea. So as you can see, this is from 1866, which is pretty cool. This belongs to my parents, and it was on their shelves for a long time downstairs, and at some point I took it up and put it here. I don't entirely know where they've got it from. I really should ask them. It has all of Shakespeare's plays in, in tiny writing. So this is The Tempest, and it's got it all in very, very small writing. The complete works of Shakespeare so it's fun flicking through it because you go through plays so fast it is absolutely beautiful and a really really lovely thing look here's the Winter's Tales so we've got the list of characters first and then we have all the rest of the dialogue I think it is a really really beautiful book and one I am very very proud to have in my possession even if it is technically my parents it lives on my shelves it's also got lovely um, painted pages whatever they're called gilded edges down the side which I think are really nice so yes there we have it lots of very old Shakespeare next on my shelf I have this two volume edition of Les Miserables by Victor Hugo from Collins Classics. I don't have a specific date for these books. I believe they were my grandfather's before he moved and he passed them down to me, but I don't know exactly when they're from. I'm going to say originally first half of the 20th century, but they might be from the 50s equally. However, I think they are really, really beautiful. I love the spines. I love Collins Classics. I think they have such nice old books. And whenever I find like a nice old Collins Classics, I get very, very excited. They have very little writing inside, but they're very, very pretty. And this is Les Miserables in two volumes and as I have mentioned before on this I do very much love Les Miserables. Next is another Collins Classics and this time Kips by H.G. Wells which I have not yet read. This was given to me by my brother for Christmas. He found it in an antiquarian bookshop and I'm really looking forward to reading Kips at some point. Possibly from this copy as it's in very good condition and I don't think I'll damage it but possibly also on Kindle. This I again don't have a date for like most of the Collins Classics there is no date inside however the introduction mentions that it, the introduction itself was written in 1935 which means the book is probably from the 30s or 40s though it could potentially be later but that that would be my guess now the other book my brother got me for christmas was this gorgeous copy of mary barton by elizabeth gaskell which is one of my favorite novels though i only read it last year it is so absolutely brilliant and i think this is a lovely world's classics edition really really pretty now this is from 1906 which is pretty exciting and it is absolutely gorgeous and still in very very nice condition so it's got a beautiful content and then inside we get Mary Barton let me bring it a little bit closer for you Mary Barton like many of Elizabeth Gaskell's novels begins most chapters with a kind of extract or poem or quote which I really enjoy it's just overall a very very pretty nice book and look at the bottom at the back it's got a nice list of titles which kind of pleases me that's really cool next is a lovely copy of Lorna Doom by R.D. Blackmore which I do really enjoy I think this is a brilliant book 
so it's been a very long time since I've read it. I really would like to read it again. This is another World Classics edition from 1913 or thereabouts. Again, it's really, really pretty inside. They're really delicately put together, the World's Classics. I think they're really nice and definitely going to be looking out for more of these in the future. This was another book that my granddad used to own and then when he moved house he w had a big sort out of all his books and I ended up with this one as well, which is brilliant because I just adore Lorna Doon. I think it's a brilliant book and again, one I really, really, really need to reread. Next is a copy of The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. I bought this in a charity shop in Winchester for about £2 because I thought it was absolutely beautiful. I mean, I love the elephant on the front. I think it's really cool. I have read A Jungle Book since I bought this. I read it on Kindle rather in this copy and I thought it was a bit odd. It kind of surprised me. It wasn't what I was expecting, which is possibly because of the Disney connection. I quite liked it, but wasn't necessarily my thing but I do think this is a really beautiful lovely book and really nice. This was published by Macmillan in 1926 and I think is a really really lovely copy. It's some nice illustrations in which is quite cool as you can see and I think are quite nice so there there are all the wolves which is quite cool. Next is this copy of The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Another book I haven't read but really really want to. Now this copy is very precious to me it's very cool but in the front we have a little sticker which says King's Norton Grammar School for Girls Form Prize presented to Jennifer Thunga, July 1949, signed by the headmistress, presented by the City of Birmingham Education Committee. Now Jennifer Thunga was in fact my grandmother. It's really lovely to have a book that belonged to her and I'm really looking forward at some point to reading The Count of Monte Cristo, though probably not in this copy because this is a bit too precious to be read. This is an Everyman's Library edition from 1946 and was awarded to my grandmother for a prize in 1949. Next is another Collins Classics. This is Villette by Charlotte Bronte and this is slightly later Collins Classics. It is from the 1960s, from 1963. You can tell this later partly because it has a date in and the end papers are different. Also the paper just feels very different from these later ones. However, I do still really like it. I do enjoy the Collins Classics selection. This was given to me by my great aunt very recently because she'd heard me speaking about how much I liked Villette and she thought that I ought to have her copy of it, which was very kind of her and really nice because this is such a beautiful edition and I love Villette so much. It is one of my favourite novels of all time. It is just absolutely brilliant and this is a very nice copy. So yes, there we go. Good old Villette. And now on to some Austen. Let's start with this beautiful Collins Classics edition of Sense and Sensibility. As I said, I love the Collins Classics and I think this one is really beautiful. And this is slightly falling apart as you can see, but it's very precious to me because it has a lot of nice family history inside. In this you can see it says, To Mummy with lots of love from Jennifer, Christmas 1952. So in the 1950s my grandmother gave this as a Christmas present to her mother, which I think is pretty cool. It's lovely to have the kind of family history. My great aunt gave this to me a few years ago as a present, which is very kind. Another fascinating thing. So in the little um, introduction about Jane Austen in here, it says that Jane Austen was born on November the 16th, and actually we now know she was born on December the 16th, but it's really interesting, that inaccuracy, I find it quite curious. I don't know if that's just like a misprint or a uh, misconception around the time, but anyway, like all the rest, the Collins classics, very nice, very old. I do love Sense and Sensibility. Next, another book with a little bit of family history. This is Northanger Abbey and Persuasion bound up in one volume, again by Jane Austen. This is from the 1920s, in fact. You can see inside that it was presented as a gift on the 10th of March, I believe, 1928, from one far back relative of mine to another, which is pretty cool. And it's a really lovely, beautiful edition. As you can see, like the little kind of book plates at the beginning, the end papers, I suppose, are really, really lovely. This was published by J.M. Dent and Sons in the 1920s. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. 1927, I believe. Now I also have a copy of Pride and Prejudice in exactly the same edition, which is also really nice. Again, has really beautiful end papers. And again, the kind of book plates within are really, really nice. This is again from the 1920s, from 1929, and again owned by the same Barbara, who I believe was my great-grandmother. And I have Mansfield Park, again, in the same kind of edition, another J.M. Dent and Sons, also owned by the Barbara. She has dated it inside 1930. And I also have another edition of Mansfield Park, which is this one, which I think is absolutely beautiful. I think the spine is just gorgeous. Now this is from the 1930s, from about 1938. I bought this about a year and a half ago at Christmas. I was up in St Andrews in Scotland for Christmas, which is where some of my family live, and I was having a look around and I managed to discover in an antiquarian bookshop this beautiful edition of Mansfield Park which I think is lovely so I thought I would buy it because I always love Jane Austen. This one has illustrations in which always makes me very happy, they are very nice. Look this is Henry Crawford and Fanny Price dancing at the ball which makes me very happy because I love Henry Crawford. He is much better than Edmund. 
And now, on to some Dickens. First for the Pickwick Papers, this rather old, rather battered copy. And this is very old. This is from 1904, another one that has been passed down in the family. It's interesting as well, this page, because someone back in my family has written in it in 1904, but then there's also this stamp from 1812 to 1912 for Dickens's centenary, which I think is pretty cool that this exists. This is from the New Century Library and is a really beautiful, beautiful edition, as you can see, from 1902, I believe, which is quite cool. There's also this edition of Barnaby Rudge, which is another family heirloom, and this is is from 1912 it says in the front and is really really beautiful these kind of <laughs> illustrations do make me laugh they look a bit odd don't they but they are kind of entertaining and just a very very lovely delicate edition one of the things I really love about books from the early 20th century and the 9th century is how delicate the pages are they just feel really really nice even if they feel quite breakable just lovely I also have the old curiosity shop by Charles Dickens which is very nice I am a big fan of the old curiosity shop as you know this is another family heirloom from about the same time and is really really nice I think this is another Collins classics a slightly older Collins classics than the ones I was showing you at the beginning of the video they have slightly odd illustrations within I much prefer the original um, illustrations by Dickens's friend Fizz but these are still quite entertaining because they are quite different and it's intriguing to see a kind of different look because most of the time now when Dickens books have illustrations in it is in the original illustrations and people don't tend to do sort of new ones and these kind of more realistic less caricatured new ones are quite interesting to have a look at and a bit odd yeah they kind of look like they were trying to make them look like photographs but anyway and there's also this slightly old, newer Collins Classics edition of Great Expectations which I found in a charity shop quite recently only within the last year it was in Wells which is quite near Bath me and my friend Sana went on a day trip and I bought this book from a charity shop it was very cheap it was only £2.50 which was very exciting because it is beautiful and I love the Collins Classics editions this is from 1959 it is in the same style of Collins Classics edition as my copy of Villette is and is really Really, really nice delicate edition which I do really like and here we have my nice little set of Dickens novels these are the Rochester editions of Dickens's novels from the Home Library Book Company I don't actually have an exact date on these but the introduction was written in 1907 which makes me think these for, are from about the 1910s probably just about pre-war though it's potential they're from the 20s but I just don't know some research I did on the publishing company suggests these are from about 1912 sadly I don't have the complete set of these ones there were several missing i found these in the same second hand and antiquarian in bookshop in greenwich that i mentioned earlier i was just going there for a look about four years ago and i found this massive part of dickens books and they were absolutely beautiful one pound each i was so excited but i was going somewhere straight afterwards so i didn't have the space in my bag so i couldn't buy them all i went back the next day to buy them and about three of the set had already been sold which was very sad because it meant i didn't get them but i do have a substantial amount of the set as you can see it's quite a lot of books but there are a few like collected shorter works of dickens so it's not all his novels which is a great shame however they're still a really beautiful lovely collection i have the pickwick papers which is lovely lovely inside very nice these have the original illustrations in which always makes me incredibly happy and i think the kind of book play opening i think this kind of title page is absolutely beautiful you can see they've got a really nice list of characters within and the beautiful gorgeous original illustrations which are just lovely i also have the old curiosity shop which again is really really lovely and beautiful which does make me very happy here's barnaby rudge another beautiful beautiful edition these are all the same so I don't know if you'll get bored but I figured I might as well show you them and how they look inside because I think they're absolutely lovely and here's Dombey and Son which as you know is my second favorite Dickens novel always makes me incredibly happy to see this beautiful beautiful book and have a lovely edition of it if you want to know more about Dombey and Son please 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 go and check out my series what the Dickens which was on a few weeks ago and I spoke a lot about Dickens it was fun and here is the lovely hard times one of the things I really love about these really old Dickens which they also do in some of the modern everyman classics is that although they have like a chapter title at the beginning they also have up here different things which are not entirely chapter titles and tell you kind of what's going on which i think is really quite cool so or like up here it says fact versus fancy because that's the discussion that's going on in those two pages and i think that's quite exciting here we have a little dorrit another one of my absolute favorite dickens novels also in the very nice edition and yeah with a really nice nice little picture here at the beginning for the front piece here is Great Expectations, as lovely as ever. 
and my all-time favourite novel forever, Our Mutual Friend. Again, I will link all the Dickens down below if you want to know more about how much I love Our Mutual Friend because I love it very much. And of course, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, another brilliant novel by Dickens, although very sadly unfinished. It, he dies slightly before finishing it, but I still think it's absolutely brilliant. So as well as The Mystery of Edwin Drood in here, they also have a shorter work of his called Master Humphrey's Clock, which I have not read yet and I really want to read. I actually have quite a lot of shorter Dickens works that I have not read, which I'm partly like, I don't know, I, I end up forgetting about them because I've read all his novels and partly I think I'm just saving them because I'm, I'm really concerned that at some point I will have no more Dickens left to read. It's sad enough that I have no more of his novels left to read, but at least I have some shorter works. Talking of some shorter works, I have some other things in these which are his shorter works, including The Uncommercial Traveller, which I don't know that much about and I should really read. The Uncommercial Traveller is kind of a series of sketches and articles written by Dickens that I have not read, so again, I want to, I really should. And here we have Sketches by Boz, which is another early piece of writing by Dickens, various sketches. I've read some of these and I couldn't really get into them that much. I, they felt quite odd, but I would like to try and read some more because it seems a shame that I've only read a few. I have, as I said, only read a couple of them. And we also have American Notes, which is some non-fiction by him on his travels to America. Again, something I really should read and I'd be really interested in. This also has pictures from Italy in it, something else I'd be intrigued to read because it's always fascinating to see how Victorian Englishmen viewed the world outside them. I've read a few extracts from this for my dissertation and that sort of thing but that's about all. And of course the Christmas books because Dickens at Christmas is always great. This contains A Christmas Carol, The Chimes, The Cricket on the Hearth, The Battle of Life and The Haunted Man. I have read all of these and really enjoy all of them especially The Cricket on the Hearth and A Christmas Carol which are brilliant although the rest are all very good too. So there we go, got to love a bit of Christmas stories by Dickens. And finally for the stars of the shows my first editions of Dickens. So here is my first edition of Nicholas Nickleby. It is very much falling apart as you can see. The cover has completely come off. I really need to get it rebound at some point but it's quite expensive so for now it sits wrapped in paper on my shelves. But it is absolutely beautiful as you can see. I received this for my 21st birthday from my friends, my housemates at university who managed to find a very good deal at a charity shop online and it was very incredibly exciting because it was such a beautiful surprise. As you can see the illustrations in it are just incredible and it's so exciting to hold a first edition Dickens in my hands. Even though I own three of them I never get over the sheer excitement of owning these. So this is from 1838 unless I am remembering incorrectly and it is just beautiful, just gorgeous. I just love the illustrations. It just makes me so happy that it's Victorian and it's just it's just wonderful. Right. And here is my edition of Dombey and Son, another thing I got for my 21st birthday, this time from my grandparents. My grandparents from both sides, in fact, teamed up to buy me this, which is very, very exciting. This comes from the Jarndyce Bookshop in London, which is a beautiful antiquarian bookshop just opposite the British Museum. And if you're ever in that area, definitely go in and have a look because it is gorgeous and they're brilliant. And they're named Jarndyce. They're named after a Dickens character, so that's pretty cool, named after something from Bleak House. This, as you can see, is quite a quite a pockmarked book. It's looking looking a little worse for wear, but it's also kind of beautiful, and I love the history. It looked like some some Victorian has spilt their, their coffee over it. That, that makes me really happy. This is from 1848. It even says the date inside, as you can see. Dombey and Son is, as you know, my second favourite Dickens novel, my second favourite book of all time, and it is so, so exciting to own this. It's just gorgeous. I think it's absolutely lovely, and the illustrations are lovely. This is actually an illustration. I have a coloured version of it on my wall because I love this one so much. It really sums up for me Mr Dombey and the whole book because Florence has just stood in the corner out of the shot and it's just just lovely. It's just a beautiful beautiful edition. I'm so excited that I own this and look at the illustrations they're just lovely. <laughs> look as well at the cover, it's just so, so Victorian, it's lovely. And finally my prized possession, my first edition of Little Dorrit, which I just think the spine is so lovely, the spine itself makes me so happy and it's beautiful. This is from 1857 as you can see, it was my 18th birthday present from my parents, they got it from Jarndyce again where Dombey and Son, the copy is also from, and it's just gorgeous. I remember I was so surprised on my birthday when I was 18, I was so amazed and just thought it was the most incredible thing ever that I had ever ever had, it's just so beautiful and such an incredible, incredible book. The illustrations are just lovely as you can see and it's such a nice, gorgeous, lovely book. Old books make me so happy, it's lovely to feel that this book has such history. Look, look at it, it's just, it's just great, it's great. This is, look, this is Arthur Clennam, Little Dorrit and Maggie, just makes me so utterly happy, utterly happy. Right. So there we have it, some old books for you today. Please let me know down in the comments what you've thought, if you enjoy old books, if you have ever found a glorious old book that you have in your collection. I would be very interested to hear because I just, I just adore old books. The books from the 19th century and the early 20th century just make me so incredibly happy and I think they're gorgeous. So yes, 
I hope you have enjoyed this video and that it was worth the wait. It's taken me a long time to make this. I'll be back very soon with another video. See you soon.